Here's to uh, here's to uh, your your new special, Jonas. Right Garvey, on, brother, comedian in this house. I got to do that over again because we. I'm trying not to swear the first ten minutes, so I can focus on you too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Spotify doesn't care as much. Um, Apple Pods, they don't care. YouTube, you know how they are playing super hardball. Yeah, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm glad you brought up YouTube. I mean, they're a necessary evil, dude. But they really, really done ruined the entire football Sunday experience for me now that they have the NFL package it's just a it's a freaking nightmare they own the NFL package now really yeah yeah wow. they, they did they started last year really? and I don't stream dude I, I I cannot stand it I mean I guess whatever I'm a dinosaur but like I like turning on it, it was perfect you turn on the television you change the channels you can go from game to game whatever you want to do but now you got this YouTube streaming bullshit where you can't split the screen you can't watch multiple games and, and then the, the signal's no good, and it's just stupid. Why anyone would want to stream anything is beyond me. It's freaking stupid. I don't stream shit unless I have to. No, I like, I like. You know what? It's kind of like, uh, like I don't get people that like, uh, uh, Alexa, turn on the lights. Oh yeah, because flipping that switch on the wall was such a fucking pain in the ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me a break, dude. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be this ornery. But you brought up YouTube right off the bat, and I'm pissed off. I was all happy because the Cubs are winning. It's football season's coming up. And uh, and now i got to probably go watch the Bears with no sound on them at Dave and Buster's and run up a huge tab. I don't know. Whatever. How you been, buddy? Yeah, well, thanks, man. I'm, 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 I'm struggling with YouTube as well, but for different reasons. Um... You know, it's it, it is what it is. I've had I've had videos taken down for medical misinformation and then accounts suspended and all that good news. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. But it's uh, I, I didn't know they had the NFL Sunday ticket now. But they, yeah, they started it last year. It was it's awful, dude. Though the bars still have direct TV, so right. they still have it, um, you know, and, and I don't mind going to the bar to watch the games, but. At the same time, I prefer to be on the couch, you know. That's expensive, bro. I, I mean, you can't do that every week. I mean, you can, but it's costly. And it's not as safe. And it's not as nice sometimes. You want to just sit at home and chill. Like, I'm in pajama bottoms right now. I can't go into a studio outside of my own studio. I mean, I mean, I can, but this isn't acceptable. I can't even go well, out. The town I live in, I can't even go outside in sweatpants without getting looked at. That's funny, so. Well, and, and, and the thing is, too, dude, like, if I want to take a nap at halftime, a nice little whiskey nap, I can. You take a nap in the booth at Dave & Buster's or wherever you're at, they tell you to leave. It's like, come on, man. Like, you know, I'm a pink. What do you mean? Like, you know, it's not like I'm laid out on the skee ball track or something. Societal norms, man. You can't you can't do that. You got to conform to the uh, – you got to capitulate if you want to watch the game. Well, how come you don't just get direct TV then? If they have it there, why don't you just get direct TV? No, no, no. I have DirecTV. They used to have the NFL package. YouTube bought it last year. So now you have to have YouTube TV and stream if you want the NFL package. DirecTV right. still has it, but at the bars. Oh. It's not YouTube at the bars because right. the bars know better. That's, could you imagine streaming something at a bar? Like, that'd be stupid. But, um, yeah, dude, so they, they've just really – they've really screwed everything up. Um, it, 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 it's, you know – I, I have to go. I like going to the bars, but at the same time, dude, you've been over here how many times for football? You know how we do it over here at my house, dude. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people coming over. We're cooking food. We're all on the couch. We're hanging out. You want to take a quick snooze. You want to do some shots. Whatever you want to do. Um, but no, now you got to like put on pants and, and go across the street and, and like we'll brush your teeth and like go, you know, to the, to the public place. And it's it's just it's really shitty, man. Well, how many games are you trying to watch that aren't on direct TV that you need the ticket to see? You, <laughs> Excuse me. Um, well, the Bears. I, I like to watch the Bears. Other than that, I'm fine with just watching whatever's on. I like to watch football. Hmm. But the nice thing is you when you had the NFL package at the house, you could just go from game to game to game. You could split your screen up into eight different games, four different games, three different games, whatever you wanted. It was just the possibilities were endless. So the Bears only have, I think, three or four games this year where they're on national TV. Other than that, I got to go elsewhere or I got to fork down for the YouTube package. But I don't want to do that because, you know, how like when you watch football, you want to hit previous on the remote and you go to another game or the red zone or wherever. It is. You can't do that when you're streaming. You got to be sucked into their stupid little stream. Mm. It's Yeah. Nah, brah. 
<laughs> I want to go back to the days when you just bought that box for like 300 bucks from some shady guy and you put it on your TV and you, the brown box, remember with the brown remote and the, and the rubber buttons and all that? It was great. Wild. But, I think, uh, the yeah. thing is, is YouTube didn't necessarily ruin it. Streaming ruined it. And YouTube yes. has, has capitalized. I mean, it's Google. So, of course, they're going to try and find as many ways. I, I, I recently renewed... And, I, and I'll tell you why I renewed it. My YouTube premium. I pretty much only watch YouTube, right? I don't watch movies on Amazon. I've started this this past year. I've started rebuilding my tangible media library because there have been too many times where I've gone on to uh, platforms, whether it be Netflix or whatever, and I want to watch Office Space or... Yep whatever it is right and it's not on the platform but if i go over to the zon the zon has it and they want to rent it to you or you can buy it for 450 or whatever it is right now okay fine but if i'm gonna buy it from them or rent it for two dollars or whatever it is might as well have it on the shelf I can just own it for the there's charity shops everywhere around here like you know how you we have red cross and whatnot back home they sell DVDs five for a pound, right? A good pound DVD. of what? Your your whole library, right? Your whole library is quality stuff. It's not, you know, like David Attenborough does the deep sea type. Deep I try to make a bad reference on your pound, and <laughs> it goes right over your head, dude. I'm like, pound of what? You know, I heard it. It's the worst joke I ever heard. <laughs> I'm trying to save you because we're trying to get your people through your comedy special. They hear that. They're like, yeah, nah, bro. So, <laughs> right. Uh, so, I mean, I'd rather spend a, a dollar and get five movies, right, that I know are quality movies. I won't buy just everything, but I mean, sometimes I'll buy shit I've never seen because sometimes there's not five there that I really want, right? But that's my point is the streaming platforms are just out of control. I can't. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with you, dude. I've got a bunch of DVDs here. I've got a bunch of books here. And you should see these fucking millennials uh, when the internet goes down. They they can't watch television and it freaks them out. You know, like, like our, we're going to go see our, our nieces and nephews and everything today. Uh, after Actually, as soon as we hang up. Um, and everything with them is is streaming. And so, like, it and like if it, the internet's down or whatever, the, the Oh, they, how do you watch T? I'm like, look, DVDs, cool. They're just like, they look at you like you're some dinosaur. But well, I'm like, hey, dude, I can watch all these movies I have at the house. We are, we're tech dinosaurs, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you, the, I don't like the word dinosaur because they, they obviously went extinct. And the thing is, we're just tech uh, veterans, or, you know, we're vintage tech consumers. We'll put it like that. Because a lot of people don't have a dvd player a blu-ray they're just really not because they don't really make dvds anymore and i Dude, get i'm it. still rocking the vhs i got it right on the on the entertainment center brother just in case <laughs> you need jesus in your life that's <laughs> crazy well I'm, I'm not mad at that i was talking to someone about that at lunch today we were talking about how expensive it used to be to buy a cassette tape you know like a movie like uh, woman in Red or beverly hills cop one was like eighty dollars back in the day and now like you know this this the stuff is just ridiculously cheap they're laying on hollywood boulevard next to like some old pants with poop in them like when people move out of their apartments they've been in for 50 years <laughs> so it's tough man but it is what it is i mean that you have to you have to see it from a I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, the it's from a from a professional or or a, a corporate perspective, media wise, it's all about making money, and the way yeah. that they maximize their money for profit share and, and and you know their shareholders and whatever is to stream everything and to fuck artists out of all they can, you know. Well, that's the problem too, like the the especially for musicians and i feel bad because i know a lot of musicians that are they're posting how much they're making on spotify and whatnot and then well, i'm the saying with comedians dude we're in the same exact boat as the musicians dude like oh yeah you got a thousand plays this week and here's your check for 29 cents right so what is, what is the solution then what do you think that can be done about it because there's obviously a, a, a market for the stream or for the content rather 
what do you, what do you do to fix that? I and mean, you have to get rid of the streamer. I mean, this is so well, a, convenient to have Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Yep. In my pocket. Well, it, it's it's the same as, as as Amazon. You know, I mean, like when I when my book came out, my other comedy specials have come out. Like Amazon's a necessary evil, and it's just like you you the trade is for someone who like me who's not Chris Rock or, or Louis C K or or, or uh, Kevin Hart that um, you need these platforms to reach a broader audience. So they right. know that and they can uh, fuck you out of money. Uh, my, my solution is I know that uh, like Louis CK, he did his, one of his specials and he streams it. It's all his, like on his website. Um, you know, uh, th there's that. It's just, um, you know, the, the, the days of, of uh, musicians, comedians, uh, I think signing those million dollar deals and, and all that stuff and making all sorts of money on records is, is over. And basically that's why these guys are, touring constantly because to me that's really the only place you're making money is from live performances and even with that um you know they they still take a big chunk from you uh speaking of which october 19th live performance on the sunset strip will be the comedy special um <laughs> but uh, on the road for a comic was and, and even musicians was always the money i mean i know you, you especially for musicians they make money on their albums but especially for comedians it's always been the road i mean you go on tour as a as a band when you, when you want to make you know more album sales but you want to make that paper but comedians i felt uh at least my understanding was it was always the road game for the money well here's the thing dude um until you, here's the thing I, i've always i learned this very early people don't want to see funny people people want to see famous people so until you're, um, you know, uh, the guy from, uh, you know, Days of Our Whatever show, I don't know, um, it, it, you know, if you get a big part in a movie or something like that and you blow up, then you're able to, to really make money on the road. Hmm. Um, but until then, dude, it's it's just, it's it's eking out a living. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's just, no, it's, you know, until you're the guy from, uh, you know, people, oh, this guy's from Saturday Night Live. This guy's from this movie, from The Hangover. Like, I know... Um, Brody Stevens, may he rest in peace. The guy passed away a few years ago, comedian. He had like a, a, a one line in the hangover. I think it was part two or something like that. And he parlayed that into the guy from the hangover and he was able to sell out bigger venues and, and, and everybody's, Oh, we're going to go see the guy from the hangover. That's just the way it is. People want to see famous people. Not funny people. So you got to reverse engineer that shit. Then you got to, you got to you have to have a large or create some sort of buzz on social media and or put out some sort of TV or film project that's big enough, well known to piggyback. That's the plan then? Well, yeah, that and, uh, you know, I've been I've been touring pretty successfully on, uh, you know, lead singer from the Table Mountain Casino uh, commercial <laughs> in 2006. Um, you know, I, I I know the drummer from that uh, that commercial. I've as never well. seen that commercial before. I never have either, dude. It, it was it was hard enough getting paid on it. Remember that? I didn't even know but, what it was called until you just said it. So now I'm going to go on YouTube and try and find it. I've I've tried, dude. It, it can't be done. But anyway, for for you guys listening and watching, uh, Vaughn and I met. It was 2006 on an audition, uh, and we ended up booking the job together uh, uh, for a commercial called Table Mountain Casino. We we were in like this fake rock band. It was. Uh, I can't believe that that was um, 18 years ago. Um, I just, I just, where does the time go, dude? Like I, you know, tomorrow I'll be 49. I can't believe it. Goes that way. 49. And this is why I just got told off uh, on, on a WhatsApp by somebody. I asked them if they wanted to join in on the podcast. Um, I said, the guy that I'm uh, is on these, she, she asked what the podcast was going to be about. I said, it's going to be about, um, my friend and who's a comedian and he's going to be promoting his his comedy special but it'll be about probably about um people t living in tents outside his house um him being older and grumpy as he's gotten older and I, and he needs to move out of LA cuz he's been there too long and he's about your age he's about 40 46 47 <laughs> so she she lost her shit cuz she's like I'm 45 I'm not speaking to you ever again so I'm like you're all the same age it's all the same anywhere between <laughs> right 50s all fucking it's all the same shit um yeah so what are your what are your plans for your birthday uh, well, um, being tomorrow's Labor Day, uh, that's a holiday here in the States. Um, 
you know, probably explain my work ethic, right? I, I you know, Labor Day is my birthday, so I hate the work. But anyway, uh, so uh, actually, after we hang up with you today, um, we are heading north to the 805 to see the nieces and nephews. I think they're having a little little cookout for Uncle Jonas today. So uh, going to go spoil the kids and uh, hopefully, I mean, they know I'm registered uh, at the Jack Daniels distillery. So hopefully I'll come home with some goodies and uh, have some good food. And then uh, tomorrow for the actual birthday, I don't know, probably just uh, lay around and eat cake, watch the Cubs play, get ready for football season, which actually, I don't know if you knew this. Do you know they're doing a four, four day in a row football kickoff weekend this year? <laughs> I don't even know when the season starts, to be honest with you. I don't okay, even there's much check this out. This Thursday, there's Thursday night football. Then yeah, they're doing a special Friday night game from uh like um I don't know, uh, uh Ukraine or something. I don't know, some foreign country. Anyway, um, uh, and then there's a Saturday game and then football Sunday. I'm like, it's crazy, and then the Monday night football. So it's crazy. Mm. Um yeah, and I saw the Bears are playing in London again this year. And you know what? If I hadn't been to London twice already, I would go. But um, if they were playing somewhere else in Europe, we'd be there. But I'm just like, I don't need to go to London again. No offense to anybody listening. I, I've been to London twice. You guys are great. It's fun. But I would like to go different places. So, mm. um, you know, but uh, but yeah, dude. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually super – I'm always excited about football season. I like it, dude, even though the Bears have been terrible since 1985. Um, I, you know, okay, they've been a couple good years. But um, – it's funny that we're doing this today because I ran into a guy this morning when I was at the rock and roll Ralph's and uh, he had to give his phone number for the, the customer thing, you know, where you, you get the discount or whatever. And uh, he said an area code. I'm like, where the hell is that? And he's like Kalamazoo, Michigan. I'm like, Oh, we started talking about the lions and, and everything <laughs> like that. And, uh, and uh, Hey man, I was pulling for you guys last, last year, dude, but that Dan Campbell likes to go for it on fourth and one every time. <laughs> so, you, you got know, to, but, man. Uh, you to. I support fourth and one Dan Campbell. You keep doing your thing. No, I, I love Dan Campbell. I love what he's done there. I, lo- I wanted to see the Lions go to the Super Bowl, but sometimes you just got to take the points, bro. But whatever. What do I know? That You, you know, he that's what got him there. So, you know, you live by the sword, die by the sword. Yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to keep that same energy. I think we'll see, we'll see if he does that this season. But I think what you're seeing potentially is analytics leaking into his uh, decision-making. So, you know, go for it traditionally it works we're gonna keep going for it i don't know what'll happen this season uh they will either have a uh similar season to last year or it'll just be a disaster i've not seen who's on the team i you know i've not looked at their schedule I'm, no I'm, they're they're dude they're they're not a fluke i think they're a legitimate good team you know the problem is it's gonna be harder for them to win this year because last year everybody kind of they kind of took the world by storm now there's a target on them um so We'll see. I mean, it doesn't really matter because the Bears are going to be undefeated and win the NFC North and the Super Bowl. So I don't, I don't know what everybody else. I don't even know why these other teams are going to show up. Might as well just you call it in. But crazy. you must be. Uh, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I don't. You know, like I said, I don't even know what, what's happening with the NFL. I'm just upset that you're having to go to the uh, to the bar. Uh, to watch your team play every week. So. Well, it's not like it's, I mean, dude, that, that's straight up white people problems right there. Like, God damn it. I have to go to the bar and eat and drink to watch football. I I was trying to, you know, not make it seem as first worldy as it is, you know, (laughs) because there's people that live like out in the middle of nowhere, like me that just don't have that option. There was, there's actually a a, a pub in town where they probably would play the game because they're, they're real Americanized over there. We have quite a few, um, intelligence officers that live literally right behind me in two different locations i'm, I'm pretty much surrounded how far are you from like like a bar like can you walk to a bar where you live yeah oh yeah there's all kinds of bars right in town there's one right there so, oh right on okay cool because i haven't been to your new place you because you've moved since i've been there right yeah no i was in a little tiny little place in ascot when you were here i'm in a house that's way too big for my my <laughs> requirements <laughs> but after i left i was only there for a year you know it was a stop stopover but after covid i moved to the country man i live in i live in like uh i live in like santa barbara compared to where i was before distance wise oh, to wow. LA. yeah i'm about an hour train ride from L, uh, london 
and oh, wow. I am, yeah, about 15 minutes from the train station, which is perfect for me. So you got to like hunt for food and stuff? No, man, it's, it's great. It's actually, you know, it's actually where I live, where I live. I don't even want to give too much info out because people listen and it's, it's weird because I'm like one of three black I know, people. Dude, I could like... <laughs> right <laughs> you look <Bob>. familiar <laughs> <laughs> actually funnily enough you see, i had some, some movers come over and i bought um uh, i don't know what it was i bought something and they were moving it and they were bringing it over and a few weeks before i was doing a pod with some dudes from here two of them from london they were in london and i was here um the beatdown podcast so if you guys are interested in some music go check that out it's not active anymore i really should bring it back because somebody out there is still downloading it which means they like it but we were discussing the queen one of the guys was a doctor uh and hip-hop artist and he couldn't tell me who the what the queen's name was and it was a it was funny so i clipped that aspect of freddie mercury out put it on youtube and um the guys that moved it because my license plate on one of my cars says um v3 tv and he's like oh shit is that are you is that your podcast and i don't want to like, tell I, people where i live but i'm gonna drive around with a license plate that says v3 tv on it well that's different you know you got to find that car so um so I'm like, yeah, that's our shit. He's like, yeah, I saw a video. I think something was like the Queen's Jubilee or something. So, of course, it, the, the Queen was trending on YouTube. So it probably just got pushed to the local algorithms. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's not awful, but it's very remote. And uh, I probably look to move at some point because it's, you know, I can't get food delivery here unless it's from in town. There's no delivery in the country. So. Yeah, see, I, I mean, dude, I, I've lived all over the country. I grew up in the suburbs, and uh, I, I'm just not one of these people that, I mean, I think it's nice, like, to go out to the country sometimes and and, and this and that. And, like, you know, I uh, even, like, when I go to Hawaii, sometimes we like to go to, like, <clears throat> the really remote places. And But after, like, a couple of days, I'm just like, okay, I'm bored. Uh, I like being in the city. I like – now, granted, we have our problems, but where does it, you know? I mean – I like being able to walk out my door and get in trouble, you know? No. Yeah. That's the thing. See, I mean, I, I have, you know, no problems with people that like to live in the city. I mean, the, I respect the city life. I got burned out on it from, I, I never grew up in the city. You know, I grew up in the suburbs and then I moved to LA and I was like, fuck this shit. So I had to get out of there. And then I came here and moved you know semi suburby but it was busy where i was like it was busy um not where you came to i moved to ascot is is semi remote it's very uh, exclusive quiet you know small place but before that it's crowded when you get on the freeway there's a lot of traffic but where i am now i'm like it's not it's not like that but well see that's just it that's what i'm saying i i like the fact that i don't know i have to get on the freeway everything i need is right outside my door and i think that's rad um Yesterday, you know, went to the movies, went to Dave and Buster's, of course. Um, you know, every, we didn't have to drive anywhere. You don't have to worry about parking, uh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you've been to my house plenty of times. You know yeah, where I'm you're, at. You're, uh, you're right in the epicenter. I mean, most people can't deal with where you live. Even if they're city people, they can't deal with where you live. Like, I didn't have a problem with L.A. If I were in L.A. right now, I could function in L.A. I liked L.A., I did, but where you are, I couldn't deal with that many people being around me all the time. I had to be where I was, you know, in the in the hills, quiet. I can come down to the bullshit. Yeah, but I need I need to have some peace, and um, that's just not where you are. You're like right in the epicenter of. No, who we the are. We are outside, yelling outside my window. <laughs> Like every day, <laughs> yeah, dude. No, it's it, and you know, it, it it does. I mean, dude, it it takes its toll on you. Um, but like I said, everything, nothing's perfect. Um, uh, so you know, you you uh, you just sometimes you just got to get out of town. Um, uh, it just it's just the way it is. But I mean, sometimes, dude, I'm I'm walking down the street, sometimes, and looking around. I'm on Sunset, and I'm like, uh, okay. The whiskey a go go. There's the rod. There's the rainbow. There, there, there's the fight. Like this is my neighborhood, and I'm like, wow, do people pay a lot of money to come here and take pictures in front of these places? And these are like my neighborhood joints. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I live in like 
the coolest place ever. I mean, to me anyway, you know, I like it here. I've been here. This is a lot. I've lived seven different states now, and uh, this is the longest I've ever been somewhere. So, I mean, I, you know, dude, I mean, I, like I said, LA, sometimes you're just like, motherfucker, I got to get the fuck out of here. And then yeah. you're like, you know, dude, this is pretty rad. No, I, I totally agree. And that was one of the, the appeals of LA when I lived there is walking into a bar on a Wednesday night to have a drink and Billy Vera and the beaters are up on stage singing the fucking their their one hit and I wasn't even expecting them to be there, you know? Like you just walk in and there's just this random nineties hit band on the stage and then and then slash pops in and, and jumps on stage with them and you know and then all yeah. of a sudden you're, you're peeing next to tommy lee in the urinal and it's just that's it's just cool. it's la man that's cool because like i went to see um we had premiere tickets uh, just a guy i knew got us premiere tickets to uh sin city right and um i'm sitting next to I think Kanye West was like three seats over for me. And like Quentin Tarantino was like three rows, you know, it's, that was weird, you know? And then we come out and we're trying to, you know, where are we going to go? And there's all these celebrities just everywhere. And I see this bodybuilder that I know, like he was a, you know, a Mr. U, Mr. Olympia. And we're, we're going to parties and shit. That kind of shit is great, man. That is a lot of fun. It's really well, And cool. the weather, the weather's perfect too. The weather weather rocks. The problem with L.A. that I have with it now, if I were to be asked to leave the United Kingdom right now, right, which which may very well happen because my indefinite leave to remain ends in the, uh, New Year's Eve this year. Not that they would ask me to go. I've not done anything. I've been good so far. Once I get citizenship, then I'm going to act crazy because then you can't kick me out. <laughs> but... <laughs> My place in L.A. Keeping it real goes wrong. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> With my place in L.A. Now, I know this is completely n not even a, a remote option right now, regardless of it being my place or anywhere else. I was paying $800 a month for my place, right? $800. And that included all my utilities because I lived in a guest house, so it was just connected to the house. Yeah, dude. No, that, those days that are over. That 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 same place, and I've the reason I've kept tabs on it is because it turned into an Airbnb after she sold the house, and I was like, oh shit, they kept the doors blue going into the bedroom that I painted with the extra aquarium stamp paint I had, which I thought was great. Three grand, yeah. Three. No, that is the one big problem here, and they keep they keep just building these luxury apartments and condos and hotels, all like two foot on center, and nobody's living in them. Like they're empty, but they keep building them, and I don't get it. And um, yeah, it's 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 funny because we were just talking about rent the other day. Um, the building I moved into when I moved here in '05, uh, two bedroom, two bath. It was about a thousand square feet. I don't know if you ever made it over to that place, but um, no. it was it was a big two bedroom. In 2005, it was 1375 a month total. You know, so so me and my roommate were each paying though. less that's, than seven hundred. That's, right. that's right. Fine. Now. That same let me, building. Let me, let me guess. Let me guess. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let me just take a guess. Same building, two bedroom, right? Two bath. Mm -hmm. Was there an ensuite? What do you mean? Is there a bed? Is there a bathroom connected to the bedroom? Yes, there was one of those, and then it was a big family room, big kitchen, and then another bedroom and another bathroom. And a All right, bathroom. where was it? Lo where was it located? Um, right across the street. Guys, right across the street from where I live now. All right, I will say. So it's in the middle of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's probably about the same. It's about three grand. It's at least twenty five hundred. No, it's it's three. Yeah, it's I was going to say it's about, it's about the same. And yeah, it's it's dude, it's just crazy the way the the rent is, and it's um, it's Southern California though, man. I mean, it it, it used I there used don't... to be affordable places. Now, now there's not anywhere in Southern California that's affordable. Nothing. Everything's expensive. You know, you used to be able to live here, live there, or we could find a place. Where, you do. Even even in Southgate, which is the hood, uh, I don't know if you remember that city, Southgate, houses there are going for a million dollars, right? Southgate but at least you can live next to Cypress Hill. Is shit. We have a Southgate in Michigan, and it's a dump. So, Well, to, you, you to only get mugged out here by the homeless people and the needles and the paper straws if you watch Fox News, because that's uh, 
you know, that's, that's <laughs> apparently um, all my friends that live in the Midwest and the South and everything that have never been here uh, that like to sit around and watch the dumbass Fox News. I, I didn't know if you knew this, dude, but yeah, the, uh, the illegals are here and they're murdering and raping. I can't even leave my house without uh, my girlfriend getting raped by some illegal border jumper, dude. It's crazy. Pandemonium has broken loose in California. Back Bro. to you, Ken. Yeah, you guys, you so. guys, got, you you guys do have problems there. With not necessarily, dude, we all it. have problems, but it's not it's, like it's, it's always it's, everything's going to be sensationalized. You're not going to sell yes magazine subscriptions and freaking airtime if I don't make it ten times worse than it is. I exactly. I do I do a promo for my Six Sad Society podcast where. And, I, and I'm sure most people have seen this. It's It just shows a screen of all these news castings that just appear on screen. And it's like all of them are saying the exact same thing. They all have reading from a script. All of them. So whatever to all that. And, you get, and it's just worse because you've got an election coming up this year. And it's just so, ramp. So I, I got a – yeah, no, it's it's crazy. But I got I got friends of mine that they live in the middle of the weeds like 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 in the middle of the weeds not like you in the middle of the weeds i'm talking like in the middle of the weeds like cornfield type shit in the right. midwest and they will not come visit because uh i didn't know if you knew this but uh it's all communists out here and another reason they don't like paper straws i'm like okay dude whatever <laughs> i'm like yeah, that's that's the biggest problem like i i'll never go out there and fuck a bunch of paper straw communists i'm like I, I can't anymore, dude. I just can't. I can't. But all these topics will be addressed on October 19th. I guarantee you that way. 